I always thought the lower weight classes were like way more elite than the higher weight classes. Like, oh they, yeah, skill wise, yeah, for sure. Not like dominance wise, but like they have a natural fighter spirit in them. But they were born in a small body. Like genetics handed them the wrong body for their profession, for their natural profession. Or the right body, because if they were bigger, they couldn't move that fast. Right, but like, you know, for, for nature wise. So I feel like because of that, they were all bullied in school a lot. And I feel like, they, I feel like everybody in the smaller weight classes just trains way harder. They probably put in so much more effort. Oh, yeah. Like John Jones, the greatest heavyweight, going, partying, doing coke and all that. Yeah, but he puts in a lot of work. Yeah, Do most other heavyweights, they just like. Do you think there's a heavyweight go? In this altitude throughout the entire night. Yeah, heavyweight go, yeah, for sure. Really? I don't think there's a heavyweight go. It can't be. I, I don't think it can be DC because. It's not, it definitely not. Yeah, I don't think it can be John Jones, honestly, no, because PEDs. It has to be. And, and I think he lost to Dominic Reyes, and Dominic Reyes is a bum. I don't think it can be Nganu because I think Nganu should fight John Jones, and that would determine who's the greatest. Oh, yeah. Honestly, if John Jones beats Nganu, that would mitigate the PEDs. He's just the most well rounded any guy you put him against no one has the gra no heavyweight could grapple like John Jones I just want to see him versus Donna makes it so that you can't use your combination yo he just manhandled so, yeah. Laura Murphy favorite. is actually kind of more attractive than when she started this fight. guest commentator Leon Edwards to give us his takes on the fight so far that's 10 hooks in a row dude that's so <laughs> accurate what do you think about this fight Francis and Ganu I'm retarded. Thank you very much, Francis Ngannou. Somebody distract him with a shiny set of keys. I wish there was more storytelling in the UFC. That's what I like. It's like, it's fine if there's not. Then it's a sport that resonates more with other people. But it's like, I just wanted to, it's my personal, like, that's what I, I want someone to come no, in there. they want that too. They, that's, that's how they sell fights. People get invested in the story, but they don't have good storytelling. If you pitch some crazy idea and send it to the UFC, they're gonna like, you know, like a way to create these stories, like something that you do before every fight, like, you know? I could think of some stuff for sure. The easy way to, to make fights have story that you don't actually need to put in any effort is racial tension. Look at all the top like yeah, fights. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, that's simple. Easy way to make a bunch of money. That's not but like, like, I'd want like- There should be a better way. Like, okay, John Jones, I feel like would have been a really good villain, right? But it's like, when the footage of him getting arrested, he's like crying and all that to the cop. And I'm like, this is, come on, man, punch the cop. Like, <laughs> what, dude? This is not no WWE, you like. I want to see some like madness in real life. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's why you have Sean Strickland. I feel like Sean Strickland is playing too much into his character. He knows about the like, oh, here's the thing, you guys. And now he says it all the time. After a certain point, it's like, people are more complicated than the characters that people imagine them to be. Show more evolution, you know? It's like too predictable now. The moment someone starts, they have to be on the edge. Yeah. A real interesting character has to be on the edge of predictable and unpredictable. Where it's like, you're excited because you're going like, oh, I think they'd be like this. Where you can describe their personality to someone. But every time you watch them, it's still exciting and you're still learning things about them. It's like Sean Strickland is past that now. It's like, he like plays know everything. He plays too much into the character of like, oh, uh, I'm just a piece of shit with money, you know? He, play, he plays into it too much now. He knows what his character is. He's been he's been pigeonholed. That I don't like. And and McGregor did the same thing, but I was biased. The way you make story is the same thing as racial tension. Like that seems like a bad way to make story for obvious reasons, but the reason why it sells is because the people watching have already crafted a story in their head based on which side they're on. But you have to make people have something worth fighting for. Now people buy racial tension fights because to them, that's something worth fighting for. They have some story in it for them, so they have some investment in it for themselves. But without that, you have to give them something worth fighting for. Like Joe Frazier versus Muhammad Ali, a question of, in the beginning, it started off as a question of joining the military draft. And Muhammad Ali was like, no, I'm not gonna fight for this country, you know, that doesn't respect us. And then it became a thing of nationalism. Both sides have to have something worth fighting for that goes against the other side. That's how you tell a story. You need to be able to look at them and go, this person is fighting for this cause, and this person's fighting for that cause. 